In today's exploration we venture inside a massive abandoned theatre that could hold more than 1,800 visitors in its prime. The decorated building boasts ornate details, working power and lost remnants of the past. To compare it to other theatres we have come across through Urbex, we'd say it is the best of the lot. Come with us into the stunning property to see what is left. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. We had an amazing response to our 10,000 subscriber giveaway from our last video. Placing all the entries into a lucky dip, we selected three winners. Congratulations Matt, Courtney and Kate. We will message you regarding your prizes. Thanks to everyone for the constant support and don't worry if you missed out this time. We will be doing more giveaways like this one soon. Now, let's get into the explore. With the theatre being located in a very public area of a city, we decided it was best to visit it at night so there would be less chance of detection. Soon enough we were in. Wow. This decay is amazing. It's so many of the furnishings are still here and completely unvandalized. But there's such a strong amount of decay. This is like my ideal place pretty much. Wouldn't smash the light bulbs. That door has not been opened in a very long time. The sounds of passerbys outside was a strange experience as we made our way downward towards the centerpiece, the main hall. That's inside the theatre there, this ceiling's collapsed. On the balcony, I think. That chandelier looks amazing. I wonder what the numbers are for. God damn. There's no vandalism at all. No. One smashed mirror. And a whole lot of chairs that are in a very bad condition. See the water dripping as well. The place is obviously experiencing a lot of water damage. These doors are so old. Still with the glass inside them as well. Oh, this is it. The main attraction. Oh my god. Wow. It's absolutely massive. It's so ornate. Like most theatres, hardly any natural light was casting into the building, meaning our torches had to be fully charged so they could be used constantly. Through the beams of artificial light we could make out the decorative features in the hall, such as the detailed balcony rim, the notorious sunburst that was shared under the balcony as well as on the towering arch ceiling, and the beautiful proscenium around the stage. 
It's no surprise that the building was listed in the early 80s, 15 years before closure, and is described as being one of the famous architect's best interiors. We thought the stage would be bigger than it was, and behind the curtain there wasn't too much space. However, the sandbags were still in place to its lower parts that once would have been raised to allow the audience to see the performance. This is the main foyer. Really not looking in its best state. Wow, look at the staircase there. The floor's still in good condition as well. This is the old kitchen, or what remains of it. The only thing I can tell is that they used to sell hot dogs. Wow, 96, oh this is so cool, Star Trek First Contact, The Adventures of Pinocchio, Dragon Heart Harry the Spy, even says about the running time of the adverts and everything, oh my god. Out of all the paperwork I've seen, this is probably some of the best, just because of how clear it is of what it is, a lot of it, it's hard to work out but... This is blatantly what was going on the night, or one of the last nights the theatre was in use. Check that out. What theatre? Nowadays would have a balcony looking over a staircase. So sick. There's quite a lot of old seats here as well. Place still has power. I'm determined to get the lights working. Playtime popcorn. And it's still there. <laughs> Bare bits. Wow. It even looks a bit like a ceiling tile or something, some of it where it's really moulded. Moving through the front floors of the property, you get the sense that this is a very different style of theatre than those you would see today. During most performances, as well as films shown in later years, there would be intervals and guests would come into these parts to sit and chat between showings. In the foyer and regions of the upper floors we are now in, Italian marble line the walls and floors. The striking red, purple and gold design is shared throughout the complex, though some of it has been blocked off as time went on by the likes of modernised office spaces. I was just thinking about how well they've kept the building's original architecture and then you come in these rooms where they've put the drop down ceilings you can even see the little bit of ornate above the ceiling there don't get why they've blocked them off really Have you set an alarm off? Is that outside? No, it's in the end. No, the alarm though. Yeah, I know. You just turned all the bonnet and turned the alarm. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I say we do it when we're finishing then. I think it's that top one. No, but one of them will say which one's the alarm. Uh, <coughs> which one was awful, so I'd say that was one. These are all one. Was, it, was that alarm going off outside? Or was it just no, in no, here? No, no, it's in here because I flicked them all on, the alarm went off. It got to be that top one because all that on lights. Okay, I say we wait anyway though. I'd, I'd wait. Okay. Just to be sure. we were ready to use the long row of blue doors that would take us onto the balcony.
The view was breathtaking. From this height we could properly take in the incredible architecture of this vast space and judge its size better with the multitude of seats gathering dust. During the property's cinema period since the 1970s, this space was split into three separate screens for films to be shown. It was only five years ago and the scintillating hall was opened up again, revealing the scale and grandeur hidden beneath the cinema additions. The theatre was constructed using funds that roughly summed 200,000 in the 1930s by notable architects of the time. Unlike most buildings of this nature, it contained excessive seats on its circle than the lower floor. The camera's focusing on the dust. There's so much dust. It's in great condition. See some lights up there as well. Obviously we tried to turn them on and it set a little alarm off, but we're still gonna turn them on again uh, just when we're about to finish so we can get the best overview of this place. We can. The only thing that shows deterioration of these seats, apart from the clear decay on the wall, is the dust. And people have just wrote their Instagrams on it. That's how dusty it is. Due to the darkness that makes the theatre hall a difficult place to cinematically film, here are some photographs we took that hopefully showcase even more detail inside the impressive room. It's rare that you see buildings closed for over 25 years in as good a condition as this property, but it seems that some of the care the owners have shown to it has prevented too much deterioration from taking place. A few years ago the roof was fixed, making the building fairly watertight. Don't usually see this in UK fairs. The projection room sticking out into the seating area. I've seen this quite a lot in American ones, but not not like this. Finally, there's a phone, <laughs> still in condition. Look at some of this stuff though, this is really cool. I'm not 100% sure what this is, but it looks old. None of the equipment remained, but there was still this control board. On the panel you can see the settings for the projectors themselves, the sound and the tape of the film. The hunt is on. Easter 98. Is that Ratatouille? It must be. Wow. I love that film. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't Ratatouille, which was released in 2007. This was a poster for the film Mouse Hunt. So, so you a waste. I think that's it. Venetian depictions are portrayed on the walls of the theatre with natural scenes of lakes, bridges, trees and hillsides. We moved downstairs into the basement to see if there was any interesting remnants left. These are the sides of the seats. Total rails. Power still on. It's the main electric board. It was well worth coming below ground level as we made possibly our best discovery of the whole explore quickly in a small storage room. It's a ton of cool shit. Wow. I'm 
I'm not going to try and describe what any of this is, but it's really cool. Completely untouched. These are all lenses for the projector. <coughs> Must be quite a lot of money left in this room. <sighs> These are the fans that I like making. Each of them have little name tags on, probably what make they are, what measurement they are. And the, the sellotape that stuck them down is like decaying. I've never seen sellotape look like that anyway. To conclude our visit, we wanted to turn the lights on briefly to see the lower floor lit up. At one point, the construction lights in the whole theatre functioned, but it seems that they have lost bulbs or maybe connection to the source. This shows that little work has been going on recently. I'm going to turn the lights on. Has it gone off? No. No. Did it go off straight away last time? Yeah. I turn them on the alarm. Yeah, just turn them on the alarm's gonna go off either way. Not that one, that's the alarm. That's the the lights are on, we'll chill it. Okay. Look at the scale of Theo. He looks tiny. All in all, this was one of our favourite explores we have done this year. Everything about the theatre's design, items and condition made it very enjoyable. We hope you liked coming along with us. We had a bit too much fun with the lights. I think we probably outstayed our welcome anyway. Probably time to go. Here are some of our photographs from the exploration of the abandoned site. If you like the look at them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we post images of our explores months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching our latest work. Due to the lockdown state of England, we are unable to explore currently, but we will be publishing videos more frequently because of it. Hopefully that's good news to you. See you next time.